Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out 14 PC games on the all-new Aya Neo Pro. Now I've made a couple other videos on this unit here, but this one's going to be dedicated to PC gaming. If you're interested in checking out my initial video and a full emulation test, I will leave links to both of those videos in the description. But overall, I've been really digging the Aya Neo Pro, and it's one of the most powerful handheld gaming PCs that I've been able to test on the channel. The version that I have here is actually the retro power version, given the color scheme. But they also have a white and a black version if you're not into this color layout here. But personally, I really do like it. So like I mentioned, this video is going to be dedicated to PC gaming. But before we jump right into it, I do want to give you a quick refresher on the specs here. So the all-new Ioneo Pro comes packed with the Ryzen 7 4800U. We have 8 cores and 16 threads. We've also got Radeon 8 graphics, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, a 1280 by 800 IPS display, and this is running Windows 10, but you can install Linux on it or Windows 11. It's really up to you. When it comes to the performance output of this unit here, it really depends on what TDP you're running that CPU at. The higher TDP, the better performance you're going to get, the more heat it's going to create, and the faster it's going to drain your battery. This comes pre-installed with some awesome software called Aya Space that easily allows you to change that TDP on the fly. There's four presets. We can do 5 watts, 11 watts, 15, and 20 watts. Or we could use a third-party application and set up a custom TDP, and in this video I'm going to be running at 35 watts. I personally wanted to get the most performance out of this unit, so I'm going to go a little higher, but I would recommend around 25 to 28 watts. That's a nice little sweet spot, but like I mentioned, we're set at 35 watts for this video just to see what this thing can do. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right into some testing, and the first game we have here is Overwatch. All the information you need is going to be in Afterburner on the built-in screen, and I'm also going to have the name of the game and the settings used in the lower left-hand corner. And again, the built-in screen is 1280 by 800. All of my games are going to be running like that. But when it comes to Overwatch, we're at medium settings here. And I got an average of 93 FPS, which is more than playable in my opinion. When it comes to Fortnite and these mobile Ryzen APUs, I always use performance mode from the settings. And with that, we have a medium high mix, performance mode, and we got an average of 87 FPS. Genshin Impact is another one I always like to test on these handhelds, and from the settings we're at 60 FPS with a high medium mix, but we can go to very high settings if you want to run this at 30. But with this high medium mix, it runs at 60 and it actually works really, really well. Here's Call of Duty Warzone, low settings, no resolution scale. We got an average of 63 FPS by the end of my run here, and we can kind of lock this at 60 if we turn that resolution scale on, and I would highly recommend it. When it comes to Forza Horizon 5, it performs really well on this little setup. We're at 1280 by 800 obviously, medium low settings, and we got an average of 76 FPS. Now you can go to high settings or even very high settings and lock it at 30 if you want to, but personally the way I would want to play this is with that medium low mix and lock it at 60. From the settings we can set it to 60 FPS and it's going to run like that all day long. It's also going to keep the heat down on that CPU. Here's Back for Blood, and this is just one of those games that does perform really well on these Ryzen APUs. 
I'm getting an average of 78 FPS, medium low, and FSR set to quality. We could get a little more out of it if we set that to performance, but I think it looks really good like this on this IPS display. Red Dead 2 was another one I wanted to test, and I usually just run the benchmark with this game because it does run through a lot of different scenarios. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to hit 60 FPS with this game here. 1280 by 800 low settings, it's just not going to do it. But if we turn V-Sync to half, you could run this at 30 with a few of these settings at medium. So one of the big questions is, will it run Crisis? And with Crisis Remastered, it actually did a pretty decent job. I would probably recommend using the original Crisis with this, but we're at 1280 by 800 low settings, and I only got an average of 51 FPS. I still think it's pretty impressive seeing that this is a handheld running Crisis like this, but like I mentioned, the original will do much better. Borderlands 3, low setting, and this is one that's always given me issues with these mobile Ryzen APUs. I've never been able to get this to run perfectly. Even at the lowest of the low here, we only got an average of 57 FPS. I mean, it's getting close there with these APUs, but it's not quite there yet. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get Afterburner to run with this game. I didn't want to reboot the system. We got an average of 46 FPS, but we are at low settings, no resolution scale, and the main thing that really helped out with performance here was setting the crowd density to low. Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of people on the street, and this really does help out with these lower end chips.
So yeah, overall, for a handheld gaming PC, I think this does a great job with PC gaming. Now, it does an even better job with emulation. If you're interested in checking that video out, link is in the description. And the first thing everybody's going to say is just wait for the Steam Deck. And of course, you know, I've got one pre-ordered. I've made a few videos talking about it. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And as soon as I can, I will do a full comparison video between the Steam Deck and the Aya Neo Pro. I do believe that on this unit here, we will have better CPU performance. But, you know, with that RDNA 2 in the Steam Deck, we're going to go way better GPU performance over there. So it's really going to be a toss-up. I think that we will have better emulation performance with the 4800U over the Steam Deck, but when it comes to the GPU performance side of things, the Steam Deck will trump the 4800U all day long. It just comes down to the 4800U being able to take those clocks up much higher, and that really does help out with the higher-end emulators. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Links to my other videos on the iNeo Pro are in the description, and if you want to learn more about this, I'll leave a link to the website down below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.